and do the fight is biblically. This isn't just people that we have to fight of, of them coming up with things on their own. If it were, then you would fight that one individual battle based on, on what they're doing. This is a much grander scheme. And it's already been prophesied in the Bible. If God is telling us about this, let's then go to this book to learn how to fight it. Instead of following, because here's the thing. There's a lot of people out there, good meaning people, well-intentioned people, people bringing good information forth. I mean, you look at like the InfoWars and the We Are Change groups and there's all, the, all these other places online you can get information about the secret societies and, and people who have exposed and uncovered all this truth and showing all these different politicians who are, who are in bed together and they are doing these things and they're wicked and they're and they're they're sodomite pests and, and all of these things right all this truth comes to the surface but a lot of times they fall short in their method of attack because they're not going to the ultimate truth and the ultimate wisdom that we need to know how to engage in this battle now if you have any doubts that Satan is behind this, look at what he did to Job. If you can remember the story of Job in chapters 1 and 2, Satan is the one who attacked Job. Satan's the one, first of all, that, that was bad-mouthing him to God. God's the one that was bragging on Job, saying, hey, look, Job's a great guy. Look, Job has integrity. Look, hey, Job is serving me. What a great guy. You know, he is, he is doing pretty much what I can expect out of a person to be doing here on earth. Look at Job. What a great example of a person. And Satan's like, yeah, well, that's just because you're protecting him and all this other stuff. So, you know, the, as the story goes, God allows him to, to, to do some things to Job, but, he, you know, not to kill him. Not, you know, there's, there's certain limits that God places on what Satan's allowed to do. Now, that doesn't mean God was doing those things. Satan was doing those things. He was the enemy. He was the one that brought all the pain and the hardship on Job. God didn't do it. He just allowed it to happen. There's a different, there's a big difference there. He made it look like God was coming down on him. He made he orchestrated for Job to receive the news from all different ends consecutively, one after the other, after the other, after the other, all on the same day. All of these tragedies happened to him. And, you know, the Bible, of course, says, while he was yet speaking, behold, this other guy came up. And he's just telling him how, you know, all of his goods, all of his animals have been destroyed, have been taken captive, and his servants are dead. And it's just one after the other after the other, all the way up until your children were all in one house. And this big whirlwind came. And the, root, and the house collapsed on him. And they're all dead. So I'm the only one left that made it out. All those people were like, I'm the only one that made it out. Satan made it so that all of these events happen in different places. I'm sure they had to have been different distances away, but he was able to calculate it so that the person, the one person out of all of those tragedies, as they left, was able to make it to Job so that he just got hit, 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 hit. One after the other really quickly in rapid succession. Satan has some wisdom. He's got some power for sure to make something like that happen. And in, in one of the events too, it said fire came down from heaven. That's what, the, that's what the guy said. Making it look like, well, who can do that but God, right? Making you think it's God doing it. That was the devil doing that. So when you see in Scripture the way that he's able to make these, you know, orchestrate and plan these things, it's no surprise that, that he's behind something even greater and grander of, ultimate, and of his ultimate desire to sit in the temple of God as God himself and proclaiming himself to be God and just saying, hey, everybody worship me. Because that was the intent of Satan from the beginning anyways. He wants to be like the Most High. He wants to be like God. And his end game, his plan is to ultimately just have the whole world 
Worship and serve him. He wants to replace God. That's why he makes war with the saints. He wants all the believers in Christ exterminated because he knows they're never going to worship him. Just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the book of Daniel, when, when they were told to bow down and to worship at the golden image, they said, look, we're not careful to answer you in this matter. You know, you can play your stupid music, but guess what? We're not going to bow down to that image. We're not going to do it because they were believers. And they had integrity. And they knew that that was wrong. There's no way they're going to bow down the image. And Satan knows that, that believers in Christ, there's no way they're going to take the mark of the beast. There's no way they're going to worship him. So the only option he has left is to just destroy him and kill him. He says, okay, I'll kill you guys. Everyone else will worship me. And then he'll have the whole world worshiping him. That's his plan. Now his plan is going to be foiled by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's going to come down and destroy him. Thank God. But he's, this is what he's doing. I mean, we, the, the history is already written in this book. We could see it. But, it. but we're living it out. And it's going to happen. Now, the Bible